Hey everyone and welcome to an all new QuintelDesigns.com HD video tutorial. I'm very proud to announce that this tutorial today is going to be our first tutorial in full 1080p HD. So now we're in full Super HD, as much quality as we can cram into these things and uh, I really hope you get a lot of benefit out of that and uh, enjoy the image quality. Full screen this bad boy and uh, if you're not seeing the HD button you can visit QuintelDesigns.com um, and see all the videos in HD there or the Vimeo account for Quintel Designs, Vimeo.com slash Quintel. In Adobe Illustrator, let's make a new print document. Now why am I choosing print document? Well, personally I like the default sizes. A nice letter size, so eight and a half, eleven sheet of paper. We'll keep it uh, vertical, and we'll call this Jalar Inked. So this is pretty much the digital process of inking a comic book in Adobe Illustrator, and the technique I'm going to use and show you is a little different. First, let's place in our image file place. Select Jalar, and you can see he's pretty much as he was on eight and a half eleven. He's pretty much the size we need him already. Let's take Jalar, and we're going to put him on layer one and create a new layer called layer two. Layer two we'll rename and we'll call this artwork. Layer one we'll call it sketch. Special thanks to Enrique again. I mean, this is a great sketch, and uh, it's really going to work well from an Adobe Illustrator standpoint. We're going to put the sketch above the artwork layer. And then we're going to go to the transparency palette, kick it down to about 50%. Hit Enter. Now, why 50? Well, yes, it's still taking up uh, all of our screen real estate and maybe even uh, affecting what we see, but we want to still see as much line detail as possible. In fact, don't be afraid to even go darker, like a 65%. Yeah, that's even better. And we'll lock that layer with the lock palette. Now in our artwork layer, we're going to use a, a, a type of illustrator technique I sort of call the cutout technique. Now the reason why we're going to use this technique is because I personally think it creates for comic book art a more realistic effect um, like it's actually been inked by a pencil or paper um, and you're gonna see that the strokes aren't all the same weight and uh, well, rather than continue to explain it we're gonna jump in here and show you so I'm gonna use my navigator to zoom in you can also do control plus on the keyboard I just like navigating around holding down the spacebar clicking it's a good way for me to work and uh, to demonstrate this we're going to well, well I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about uh, work on that for a little while and then I'm gonna speed up the video so we're not wasting too much of your time um, with with process and interaction I'll slow down and highlight any important points so let's grab our pen tool the almighty pen tool and our pen tool, we're going to make it cyan, drum it all the way up to 100. Select our stroke right here, and I'm over in the color palette. And get rid of our stroke, go back to cyan. So, what we're basically making with our pen, you can see here a big solid cyan piece of art. Delete that away. So now uh, I'm going to start tracing Jalar here and um, watch the technique I use. Um, it should be uh, maybe a little different than what you're used to seeing in some other tutorials. So I zoom in really close and I start right on the edge. And remember, if you click once, you get a straight line. If you click, hold down, and drag, you get a curved line. And there's not too many perfectly straight lines in a piece of artwork like this. So you can see the screen moving itself. 
That's always a new challenge uh, if you don't use the Illustrator a lot. Now here's an interesting thing. We see our red line, our anchor line, is all the way out to here. So that means if I try and click here, it's going to put a nasty curve in for us. So, Control z that, undo. And I'm going to click on the dot again. You'll see this big red line right here. It's going to go away. Click, and now it's gone. And what that allows me to do is the next time I click, you see I don't get that uh, big curve that we had before. We'll click that point here. Bring it around. Nice big spike on his shoulder. And click there, and you can see it doesn't really matter where we click on the outer bounds of the document. You can just click around, get some points, and then back here. And basically what we're doing is we're tracing the outside of the character as a whole. Um, and then we're going to use our after work to cut out the key pieces. So again, you can see almost every single point I have, I'm clicking again to get rid of that previous curve. Zooming in is always helpful. He's got these horns and they're a little bit indented. We'll worry about some of that detail later. That might be our first straight line of the entire document. Right there, there's a straight line again. A little bit of a curve here on the head. And now Enrique here ran out of paper space, so we're going to take it all the way out there to get his horn completed. And as you can see, sometimes the document moves on its own, and you just have to basically cope with it. You have to deal with that as well as trying to get this out the door. All right, so we've entirely traced Jalar, and he is full, and you can see he's the only cyan thing, so it's nice and easy to see. Now we're going to go in and we're going to start cutting out the details. So we get, um, obviously, um, the details that were drawn, and um, we, we avoid that look that Illustrator can sometimes have of the same, you know, it's clearly a one-point stroke here. Um, to sort of illustrate what we're going to do, I'm going to show you in a box over here on the right. Normally in Illustrator, if you make a shape, and you give that shape a stroke, we'll give this one a red stroke, you can adjust different sizes of the stroke, but it almost looks, in a sense, too perfect. Now if I take that same exact square, and as opposed to giving it an automatic stroke, I sit there, and I draw in myself using a lot of clicks to get the extra detail that usually a pen or a pencil would get. You're going to see pretty quick. And when we turn this red, that the effect is a little bit more hand drawn. So, comparing these two things, we have the straight Illustrator perfection and the hand drawn sort of randomness of, of real world art. And that's the look we're going for. So, I'll delete those and show you how we do that with our friend Jalar here. First, let's choose white as our color. And remember to get rid of the stroke. Just made those boxes, so that's important. And right on the artwork layer, we're going to select our blue. And we're going to hit Control 2. And that locks it down, so we can't select the blue, we can't move it. It's exactly where we want it. And then we're going to start cutting out pieces of it with our white shape. So with our white shape, let's start in an area that'll be nice, quick, and easy. Let's start with a horn. 
zoom into the horn, get as much detail as you can. And here, we're going to follow the inner lines. And we're not going to get the shading. You see all these little shading lines within it right here, all the way to the tip. We're not going to get those yet. This is a multiple step process and it may even take you a while, but the end result is so much more um, detail driven than uh, Adobe Illustrator or tends to be usually. So you're going to get a great look and uh, you're going to do it in a format that's scalable and print ready if you're actually making your own comic book. And again, you can see how his lines weren't exactly smooth. They were sketching lines, and that's what this type of artwork really feels like. It feels like a, not necessarily a quick drawing, but definitely by hand. It doesn't feel computerized. Okay, so now we've gotten a lot further with our cutting out of the design. And as you can see, our horns are done. And uh, even upstairs in his head is, uh, is pretty much done. But I want to show you some things that are going to happen throughout your tracing. If we look here, I was able to make all of this here that you see highlighted in red one object. Now there's some pieces that just can't be. Right here is separate. This is separate because there's clear black lines. Um, well, they're cyan at the moment, but there really be black lines in the end separating these things. So your job then is to take the pen tool and just go over and get these tiny little parts here that you see. Like maybe this is a little too thick and you think that it needed a little, a little bit more. And you can see how many how many points I made there, there's a lot of clicking going on. Um, how to avoid making it too heavy in some spots and lighter in others um, is really up to you. But you're going to get moments where things just don't fit. So I couldn't make this part of one object even if I, I really wanted to, it would just make it too complex, this horn. So we're going to Pick cyan from our color palette. We're going to go in and we're just going to draw this one horn. And I'll zoom in for you and let's watch how I try and keep this one object. So I'm going to come around the bottom. And you can see there's a small break, break here uh, in Enrique's line. So we're going to seize that opportunity to come in here and actually catch some of these finer details. And it's okay if they're not perfectly touching in the Illustrator file because some of it won't be even seen. But we're gonna wrap around. It's almost like we're tracing the inside of the horn. Now, there's a clear line right here that breaks these sections, but I'm gonna break that rule as an anchor and come around for the sake of making this one object, continue to trace, and you see here inside, so you can see it, it's kind of uh, going around, almost touching there. finally right there at the end and if you wanted to you could even go in and connect that piece afterwards with a separate line and you can see in just one object here we've got our entire horn so it's important of grouping these to be as simple as possible without losing detail because once it's time to start coloring this then it's going to be our responsibility to say, well, what goes where, where's the shading, and um, the less effort we need to put in to figure out what sections belong to what, the better. So that's really going to help us in the end.
So now we're slowing down one more time. And uh, you can see I pretty much did all that I could with that one object. Um, and it still left some sections undone. So the bottom of the mouth, this eye here, sort of its detail. And uh, we're just going to continue to plug away. So this whole thing right now has run me about 15, 20 minutes. So just going to continue doing it and uh, speed it up for you guys. There we go. Did you break a sweat yet? <laughs> so now we have our final cutout of Jalar. And uh, you're officially ready for the big reveal. Maybe I'm going to like it, maybe I don't, but you're here to experience it with me. Let's hide our sketch layer. There we go, Jalar is done. So, that is basically it <laughs> now. Whether or not that's the whole tutorial is kind of up to you. Because the next step is coloring, and uh, that's where it gets a little fun. So, uh... Stay tuned and, uh, and we'll tackle that next.